So displacement and total distance are two different ways of measuring how far something has traveled in a problem that usually has to relate with distance, velocity, and acceleration. So first let's talk about displacement. That's the simplest one. So the displacement of an object, now you're going, to be, you're going to have to have an interval here. So from A to B is simply its distance at B minus its distance at A. So many times we're going to have our function as S of T for our position function. So we would just do S of B minus S of A. The position, whatever position function you have at, at, uh, evaluated at the second uh, time, subtracting from, uh, and you subtract from that the displacement or the position function at the first time. So from 0 to 8 seconds, you do S of 8 minus S of 0. And that's all you have to do for displacement. So what that tells you is how far away are you from where you started. So let's say we had a number line, and you start here, and you end up here. The displacement tells you how far away from your starting point are you. Total distance is a slightly different concept because just because you ended up here doesn't mean that's the entire distance you traveled. For example, what if you went like this and then came back and then went this way and then came back and then went over here and ended up here. So pretend all of these lines are happening in this same plane. I just drew them lower so that you could see them all. You still ended up here, and you still ended up this far away from your starting point. But the total distance you traveled is certainly not just this distance. So distance, uh, total distance and displacement don't have to be the same thing. So how do you find the total distance? You need to figure out where did you turn around, all these turning around points, and measure the distance of each gap on its own, and then add them all together. So let's think about what would that mean to figure out uh, the position at the points when it turns around. When it turns around means it goes from moving right to moving left, or from moving left to moving right. And what that means is that your velocity is changing sign from either positive to negative or negative to positive. So all of these points that I circled here happen when your velocity function is equal to zero. Essentially what you need to do is you need to find the critical numbers of your position. Remember that the derivative of position is velocity. So if you want the derivative velocity to be zero, you're finding the critical numbers of s. Then what you need to do is break them all into um, separate distances. So let's call that this time was c1, c2, c3, c4, and c5, and that this one was zero you would need to do s of c1 minus s of 0. That would give you this distance in my little, you know, wor uh, swervy path here. The next distance would be s of c2 minus s of c1. And then on and on, you would add up all of those distances, add them all together. If any of these are negative, you would make them positive. So really, we should be doing absolute value around all of these. And if you add those all together, that will give you the total distance. So you can check on many different problems. If the particle turns around, or whatever is moving, if it turns around at all, the displacement and total distance are not going to be the same.